This documentary explores the controversy of why condemned prisoners should not be able to donate their organs after execution. First, I want to go speak to Natalie Figueroa, warden of San Quentin State Prison in Marin County, California. San Quentin holds the highest number of condemned inmates in the nation. How many inmates are currently on death row? Uh, San Quentin currently holds 700 prisoners on death row and all of the executions in California have to take place at our prison for both male and female pr prisoners. How long is the time between their sentence and their execution? So it really depends on their sentence, but generally the time in between when they're sentenced and when they're executed is 11, 10, 11 years. About how many people in the country in general are executed a year? So the number has declined dramatically since 1998, which uh, where 98 prisoners were executed that year. Uh, this year, or this past year in 2015, there were only 28 prisoners executed in the country. What percentage of inmates have some sort of illness or health issue? Well, um, Coming in from their sentence, their obesity, drug use, sexual transmitted disease are a big problem. We don't have an exact number for that yet, and in terms of mental illness, about 55% of our prisoners are classified as mentally ill. Would you say that the inmates' health generally declines from the time they are sentenced to when they are executed? Yes, so the men are living in very close quarters, which only, you know, is grounds for, you know, disease to come up. and. So sexually, again, sexually transmitted disease and obesity and also depression rates uh, go up. Health is a large issue within correctional facilities. The amount of people, especially who are sentenced to death, experience a rapid decline in health, both physically and mentally. Because of the 10.6 year gap between sentence and execution, the number of potential donors decreases by approximately 50 people per year. With this decline and the low amount of people that are actually executed a year, prisoners would make a very, very small dent in the donor list. Next, I want to speak with Addison Morton, whose brother's murderer is currently on death row. When did you lose your loved one? It was December 19th, 2015. Can you describe the scene and how you felt? It was just a normal Saturday night. I was hanging out with my brother Peter and a couple of friends at the local bar, and we were just shooting pool. There was this man that walked in, and he just like didn't look like good news, but Peter, being the nice guy he is, invited him over to play pool, and they were playing a game, but as they were playing, it seemed that the man was getting angry and angrier. Maybe because he was losing. I mean, Peter was very good at playing pool. But the next thing I know, Peter is just gushing from the neck with blood from the pool cue that the man had broken in half and stabbed in his neck. It was so hard for me to just see my dying brother there on the ground. Is the murder on death row? Yes. We found out that Peter wasn't the only victim of this man. There were 10 others that had been murdered by this monster. How do you feel about that? I'm angered that, that he hasn't, he's killed 10 people. And 10 lives, 10 families that were just as affected as I am. It's not just that Peter's gone, but like the very essence in our family of him is gone. It affects so many people, not just the ones that are killed. I want him punished to the fullest extent of law. Like he should be dead for his actions. He needs to suffer. In the end, prisoner organ donation would barely make a dent in the donor list because of endless health reasons. In addition, there are many ethical drawbacks to allowing them to do so, especially regarding the families of victims. For more information on both the pro and the con side, visit the New York Times debate titled, Should Prisoners Be Allowed to Donate Their Organs?